So yeah, it was a uh, it was a tasty burger. It was it was a burger that satisfied. Yeah, I'll give it that. It was a burger that satisfied the onions, Sebastian. As you notice, were not chopped. They were not chopped. Same problem. Your teeth could not cut them. Yeah. Same problem the Lalo's had. Have you since last week? Have you worked on the way you bite? No. I think I, I always to, plan to when I go to I, sleep. I think I you should see a specialist and start doing some specific biting exercises. Maybe just bite things for a few, a few, you know, maybe twenty minutes every day to work on how you bite things, so okay. that your the muscles in your jaw start adjusting. I guess I bite things. I bite things pretty often, but never really had a. But problem. maybe you're not biting them properly. That's true. But you know, if you're walking crooked all the time, I've had a pain in my left foot for months, and I'm pretty sure. Either I'm walking a little crookedly. Okay. Maybe I'm going downstairs improperly. I think that might be it. Where's my shoes? A little uncertain still. Um, you have so many shoes. I know. Well, no. I think it's my perhaps my work shoes that are uh, not giving enough support. So, I, you know, if I have a two-day weekend, my foot doesn't hurt as much. But is it because I'm not on my feet as much because I'm not at work? Or is it because I'm not wearing my work shoes? Inconclusive. This is making me feel real old. Yeah, I know. These aren't the kind of conversations you have in elementary school on recess. No. Break. No. I don't think my shoes have enough support. And now, (laughs) that's right. And now I'm even trying to correct the way I walk. I think I was beginning to walk with too much of a gait with my feet a little too far out. And so now I'm trying to walk with my feet more straight. And I've realized I look like a weirdo when I'm doing it because I twist my wrists in. And while I'm twisting my ankles in so that I walk straight. So now I'm like walking with my palms out to the world while I'm <laughs> trying just, to walk straight. I must look like a weirdo while like really focusing on You must look like an walk. alien trying to be human. <laughs> like, just... I am just like you. What, what, is, what is the issue? Pay no attention to my, my strange stance. Yeah. Um, it seems to have been helping. Okay. Good. So you let your feet are closer together when you walk. Not that they're closer together; that my 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 toes don't point outward so much as forward. They usually point outward, so now I'm yeah. making an effort so that they just walk. So I walk straight. Yeah, it's, it's too hard to think about. You start thinking about stuff like that, and then you start forgetting how to walk completely. Exactly, because that's that's such a weird thing to me is how you just walk without thinking about it. Mm-hmm. And the moment you start thinking about it, and you're very conscious of every step you take. That's when you just collapse like a marionette with no nobody controlling you. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um Matthew, earlier you were you were talking to me uh about a lunch product that you don't believe in. Are you referring to soup? Yes. You were talking about Campbell's chunky soup. Yeah. The I guess it's not a meal, it's the soup that eats like a meal. Yes, it's reminiscent of meals uh past. Yes. I guess. Um I don't buy it. Uh, figuratively or literally? I used to, uh, both, I guess. I used to buy it a lot. I used to yeah. love that stuff. Yeah, me too. But It's a little yeah. overpriced for what it is, I find. Definitely, because it's not a meal. It doesn't eat like a meal. They, they have commercials with, uh, you know, like a, a football player's grandmother mm-hmm. or maybe mother coming down to the field being like, oh, he didn't get his chunky soup. He's not going to play well. And this big, strong behemoth of a man comes and he downs a, a can of chunky soup. He's not drinking out of the can, is I'm he? sure it's like a nice prepared bowl. Yeah, I'm sure. You can't eat soup quickly, first of all. No matter how big you are, the insides of a man's body still feel pain. Okay, well, that's if the soup is too hot. So it's, even if it's uh, if it's the, the temperature of soup, it's going to be too hot. What do you mean if it's the temperature of soup? The temperature of soup is whatever temperature the soup is. So whatever you make it, well, then you're having cold soup. You're having lukewarm soup. That's I all. love lukewarm soup. I don't like hot soup. I don't like hot drinks. Even my coffee, I let it sit on the table. I make it, and I let yeah. it sit on the table until it's warm. Oh, man. I don't want hot coffee. So you could chug your if, coffee, and it wouldn't burn you. Exactly. So That's it's weird. nice, warm to coffee. Me. Honestly, I'm waiting, depending on the temperature of my apartment, basically. I'm waiting until the, the steam isn't rising. From from the cup. That's so strange. Unless it's the middle of winter, it might be pretty cold in my apartment. And honestly, uh, you know, you can almost see your breath sometimes. So maybe maybe <laughs> I'll 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 let the steam still be rising out of it at that point. Yeah. But uh, yeah, generally I'm waiting until I don't. It does. It's not visibly hot anymore, and that's when I start drinking it. 
I guess we have different ideas for what soup should be because to me it should always be hot. You can take a spoon, you blow on it a little bit, you eat some of the soup. Either way, the the temperature doesn't really play a factor. I'm just thinking it, it does not eat like a meal. Even when I was young, I would put ice cubes in my soup. It was too hot. You're s- freaking me out. Why am I waiting around behavior? to eat my soup? Let me just put a nice couple ice cubes in here, stir it around. Now it's at a appropriate temperature to eat. You're watering it down, too. Yeah, a little bit. Two ice cubes in a bowl of soup is not a big deal. <laughs> it's so strange. It's it's You're going to have a little storm in your belly. Why would I have a storm? So much heat, so much cold. Well, I'm not mixing swallowing it ice cubes and then swallowing hot soup. I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but you're going to have a stomach ache. Uh, but it filled you up, right? It filled you up as a child. Didn't soup? fill you up as a full-grown uh, football player. Oh, a chunky soup. Yeah. I never really had it as a kid. It was more maybe in my early 20s. Okay. And you have a little something extra with a chunky soup. Maybe if you have like a little bread, you have a little bun with it. Okay. Maybe a small sandwich. That's a meal. There we go. I can get behind that. But, you know, the, the one thing about chunky soup is I, I loved it as a kid, but I hated the chicken. Mm-hmm. I was always very picky about chicken. Go on. You're... Always very picky about many things, Matthew. Mm. Why well, I like I like the finer cuts of meat, you know. And if if someone's boasting that their their soup has all white meat chicken, mm-hmm. I want to make sure it's the pristine, the good pieces, like only the kind of pieces you'd feed the queen. <laughs> like I don't want I don't want the scraps that you would also put into dog food. Okay, because you know sometimes dog food says all white chicken. If Does it really? You think a dog cares if it's white? light or dark chicken? No, I think the people who feed their dogs yeah. care. I think dogs yeah, will eat true. varnish <laughs> if given the option. Um, but I, I would find myself in my 20s, I'd find myself buying chunky soup because I remember liking it as a kid, but picking out all of the chicken and then replacing it with my own chicken. And I'm really? Like, I'm paying way too much money for just a, a soup base. I should just be making my own soup. Absolutely. And then I think to how much work it would be to make your own soup. Not that much. And, well, <laughs> we have different ideas of what too much work is also. I suppose. Because I just never did it, and I just stopped having soup. When was the last time you had soup, Matthew? I don't know. I mean, it is the end of summer now. We're, <laughs> it's difficult to We're to in late about. August, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's not it's not the soup season. Yeah, I'll tell you I the had, last time I had a chunky soup. That was years and years ago. I legitimately haven't had some soup in, in months. Yeah. Of any kind. Wow. I have a cold soup, gazpacho, none of that. I never liked a gazpacho. Well, I mean, that's a soup that you're supposed to eat cold. Yeah. Meaning that the other soups, you're supposed to eat hot. Effectively. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't like a cold soup, and I don't like a hot soup. <laughs> I, I like the Goldilocks soup, a soup that just is right. just right. Just right. <laughs> I okay. actually no. Now that I'm thinking about it, I did have a soup this summer. Uh, I prepared a soup, some sort of like bok choy or something in there, mm. uh, and I had one warm soup, and then had leftovers the next day, and it was blistering hot the next day, and I thought to myself, well, maybe a cold soup will be exactly what I need, and I was gagging on it. I could barely, I could barely <laughs> eat it. I needed to warm it up. <laughs> yes, because when it's cold, it gets like a film over it too. It's kind of oh, gross. No, I mixed it up and it's stuff. Slimy but... too. The I, I'm I'm I reserve soup now for when I'm very ill, when I have the flu, when I have a very bad cold. Well, if it's just a blizzard out, I'll have a stew. A stew. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Stew is like a soup's like better, better cousin. Cousin is yeah. Like he's more handsome. He's got a better job, a better car. He's his thicker. He's he's thicker. <laughs> yeah. That's good for that's good for people and stews. What do you mean he's thicker, Matthew? <laughs> a bigger boned, you know. Sure. Okay, thicker Matthew. Muscle, not, thicker. I just still don't think you're you're helping your cause. You so think we're of gonna... you think of like a somebody with a really thick neck. Yeah, it's a good thing. It's a good call quality to have. All right. I was thinking more like he has a yacht. <laughs> okay. Well, then this is this is these are. Tangible things. These are these are great just, head of hair. I don't want to think of my stew this way. <laughs> so Matthew, on Monday we had a bit of a rare occurrence. Monday afternoon there was a solar eclipse. Yeah, partial solar eclipse, but still good enough to blind you. 
Yeah? Yeah. Now, I, I think you're supposed to make, like, these, like, uh, pinhole oh, box that, glasses. That so, like, trash. Yeah? Something like that. Isn't that just when you're looking at the shadow of a solar eclipse? Is that how that works? Aren't you always, of course, looking at the shadow of the solar eclipse? Because the moon <laughs> passes in front of the sun, so you're looking at the absence of light? I guess you are looking at... Well, now you're you're physically looking at the moon pass in front of the sun. So it's blocking out the light. So it's blocking out the light. You're not really looking at a shadow. You're looking at something blocking the light out. I but, suppose. But I think with those pinhole, if I if I'm, I've never made one myself. But mm-hmm. I think you're just looking at a circle of light, like on your floor or in a box or something, and then you see the shadow of where there's the light is being covered up. Like I could see so that at that anytime. point, you're just looking at a shadow. Yeah, it's like I can get the same effect by looking at my wall with a light shining on it and me covering it with my hand. It's like a hand puppet. Yeah, but a moon. Yeah, I need to stare at the sun. So, Matthew, I, I've got a couple questions for you. Have you ever stared at a solar eclipse before? Yeah. No, I've, I've, I haven't really had opportunities to other uh, except for the past uh, Monday. Because mm-hmm. last time I think one really happened I was in elementary school and they they tried to scare you. Go on. From looking up at the sky. I remember there was no lunch hour that day. Uh they had closed all like no recess. You well, stayed indoors. Was... I'm sure they just didn't teach right through the lunch and say, Well, well no there, no lunch for you. There was a lunch kids. hour, but there was no outdoor lunch play. Got it. You know? So it was all you stay inside. We they close all the curtains in the classroom. And if you had to go to the washroom because the solar eclipse lasts a couple of hours, if you have to go to the washroom, you look down at the floor. Don't look up. Don't look out the windows. Or you will go blind. So, Matthew, I'm not sure if we were part of the same school board in elementary school, but uh, I believe we were both in third grade yeah. uh, during the solar eclipse. Uh, I must have been eight or nine years old. And I recall they they drew the blinds. They We, we had to stay indoors for our, our lunch recess. Mm-hmm. And... Because of all of this uh, this hubbub, I specifically went to the washroom just to look out the window and stare at the sun. <laughs> yeah. And I still can see. You still see sunspots when I you s- close your eyes? Is that no. what you're saying? No, no. I can, I can see all the time. I did, I did not go blind as was threatened. Yeah. Uh, and honestly, I don't... I, I think if you stare at the sun for any three-hour period, maybe you will lose your vision or it will affect your vision. I think if you glance at the sun, you're fine. And if you glance at eclipse, you're still fine. I think you just – you don't let it know you're looking at it. If you look at it the way you would spy on a person, you're just every now and then you look at and you look away. (laughs) As soon as the sun notices you look at you, you just look at your watch or whatever. You don't want to let the sun know you're looking because it's going to channel all of its (laughs) intensity right into your retinas. Yeah, that's it. Burn it right out of your skull. But no, I mean I watched it. I looked at it. I look at the sun sometimes and and I'm like, you know, how bad can that sun really be during a solar eclipse? Because really you're seeing less of it. How often, yeah, how often are you just looking at the sun, Matthew? I mean, when the sun's out, I stare up at it. Hey, sun, thanks for doing your thing. But you're staring at the sun every day? Yeah. What do you expect to see? What are you staring at? I'm just, just looking. You look at the moon. You see the man in the moon? Sometimes? I suppose so. I want to see the, I want to see the man in the sun. I want to, I want to catch that one day when the sun pulls down some shades. Like the raisin bran, son. Exactly. I want to see that so bad. Put two scoops of raisins <laughs> in my box of raisin bran. Yeah. Make my morning. <laughs> I love raisin bran. Yeah. I. You know what is amazing? Eating raisin bran while you're looking at the solar eclipse. I didn't have any raisin bran. However, uh, I just wore a few pairs of sunglasses. And I leaned back and I just stared up at that uh, up at that golden boy. So in like another 20 years when there's another solar eclipse, Matthew, you get that Raisin Bran ready. Yeah. I'll finally have all everything I've ever wanted for a solar eclipse all together. See, now, just, just moving off onto raisins for a second here. You really want to get the raisins. <laughs> Go ahead. Talk about your raisins. They're just grapes, you know. Well, not anymore. Now they're raisins. Yeah. I generally don't like raisins because they're often hiding in things. Raisins are like the ninjas of of of, of fruit. They're just hiding yeah. in things. 
you have a muffin, you're like, oh, sweet chocolate chip muffin. Ah, 